So in this video, I'm going to import my very small but notable notebook from Evernote into Notion. And we're starting right now. As with any import into Notion, you need to go into the import settings, which can be done in the main page, but I'm going to use the sidebar just out of convenience. Then I'm going to click on the Evernote and it looks like it's going to give me a separate window. Now I am signed into Evernote on another window, so that's probably why it's automatically signed me in, but if not, I would imagine you just sign in using your login details for your Evernote account. I'm doing this with you as you see it, so I'm just going to click on for one year. And I'm just going to authenticate that. I assume that's going to link the Evernote and Notion accounts so that they can import appropriately. Now, if you watched my previous video comparing Evernote to Notion, you know that I use Notion, not Evernote. So I only have two notebooks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my notebook and then I'm just going to import that one notebook. Before I go and see what Notion's actually done with my notebook, it's actually given me this getting started from Evernote page, which looks like a getting started with Notion page. It looks like it's linking to some of the basic videos that Notion's done on their YouTube channel, which obviously you can find on YouTube. Um, but that's, that's interesting to see that they've done that. I know you get a getting started page when you first make an account, but it looks like they give you another getting started page when you import from Evernote. Going back to the import, it looks like what it's done is it's just taken the notebook and taken all of the notes and basically made a database of that notebook. So I have a database page named the name of the notebook, which was my notebook, and then each note has become a data point inside the database. Just out of preference and convenience, I'm going to drag that database page into the page I'd already created, just so it's all in one place, because now what I'm going to do is import the other notebooks. Now I've imported my notebook again, and then I've also imported the notebook stack. And what it looks like it's done is basically said that each notebook is a database and then each note inside the notebook is a page. So every time you import a notebook with the tick, it's going to import that notebook as a database, as a separate database. So I think I'm gonna have a couple of duplicate notebook databases now. Now, when I go into the note, you can see it's actually carried over the created time, the updated time, and the URL that I had linked inside the page, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then it also has a multi-select tag, which I would imagine is the tags from Evernote, but I didn't actually tag anything in Evernote because that's not what I've been using Evernote for. And I would actually change the way I sort information because I'm now using Notion, not Evernote. So I wouldn't personally use that tag, but it's there. And now I'm going into another database. You can actually see another property. And there's a reminder property in there, which is a date property. And I'm assuming that is there because there was a reminder on one of the notes inside this specific database. Now the pages have actually been formatted in Notion the same way they were formatted in Evernote. So even though I've clipped Twitter and YouTube into Evernote and then imported that into Notion, it's actually kept the same formatting from Evernote into Notion, which I guess makes sense. Um, but it does mean that there isn't a YouTube embed for each of the videos, it's just the URL link. It's also brought over the handwritten note as an image, which is kind of interesting, and I guess that's how Evernote stores it anyway but the audio file seems to have come over as a file that you have to click on and then play, which I guess isn't ideal, but if you're using audio files and you've got lots of them, maybe just keep them in Evernote, not really sure. So there's that reminder, which has caused that property to be created. And it's actually interesting that it's carried over the reminder from Evernote into Notion. So that reminder is still there. That's pretty cool. Now going into the note that had the table in, it's actually quite interesting. What it's done is it's turned the table from Evernote into a database inside the note in Notion, which I guess is a pro and con, but then because there's no aesthetic looking tables in Notion or basic tables in Notion, that's all it can really do. If you're interested to hear a comparison between Notion and Evernote and hear my thoughts about it, check out this video over here and I'll see you there.